Hello. Um, I'd like to explain to you how the proposed junction for the A45 Broad Lane intersection is going to work. Um, just so you get your bearings, this is the junction by the Wingwa res restaurant. The issue here is congestion. Um, there's, at the moment, you know, we've measured um, delays, we've looked at queue lengths, and the sort of the average delay is about four minutes at this junction. Uh, and I know to some people that perhaps doesn't sound a great deal, but in actual fact, um, there's a huge variability in people's journey time through here. You know, so you can never be sure whether you're going to get through quite quickly or whether it's going to take quite some time. Um, the traffic lights are set on what we call a cycle time of three minutes. So, like from going to green on one road, it takes three minutes to go green again on the same road, which is actually, when you sat in your car waiting, um, a huge amount of time. Um, particularly, there are problems on Broad Lane. That causes a lot of problems for the bus operators. And it's the Broad Lane legs which are perhaps the most unreliable and have got the biggest problems. Another problem at this junction is the pedestrian facilities. Um, there are no sort of red and green men at any of the crossings on the junction. And it's what we call walk with. In other words, you just have to look at the traffic lights, wait for the traffic to stop and judge when it's safe to cross. Clearly, um, for particularly for people who are a bit slower or got push chairs or whatever, that that, that ain't great. So, you know, there's a number of reasons why we actually want to have a look at this junction. Now, one of the first things we did, of course, was to look at the existing junction. How, you know, how could we make that work better? Because we don't want to sort of have to dig all the roads up unnecessarily. Um, a lot of people have suggested that we need to look at putting a, a right turn um, filter on coming out of Broad Lane, going down towards Sainsbury's. Um, the problem with doing that is that whilst it's, it's perfectly feasible to do it, it actually introduces a lot of further delays into the rest of the junction and would cause some quite significant delays on the A45. And it wouldn't solve the pedestrian problem either. So we had to look again really as to how we we're going to make this work. And what we've done is we've come up with an idea which is possibly unique, um, which is to look at a cross between a signalised crossroads and a signalised roundabout. Um, and this is it here on this plan. Um, as you can see, it looks like a bit like um, a roundabout with the sort of the green blob in the middle, but it actually works very much in the way that a sort of a traffic um, signal intersection would work. So just to get your bearings, that's Broad Lane going towards the city centre. That's the Wingwa restaurant. Broad Lane going out of town, up towards um, Bannerbrook Park. A45 going towards Birmingham, and A45 down towards Sainsbury's Toll Bar, Bangington. So that hopefully explains where we are. Um, this is known as Dunchurch Highway through this section. So what will happen is, um, as you can see, there are stop lines coming up the A45 there, and then a stop line on the A45 here. But on the broad lane approaches, there are give way lines rather than sort of traffic lights. And you can see also there are stop lines in the middle here. So it'll work in two stages. So um, the first stage is for safer traffic going towards Birmingham, it'll come up here, these lights will turn to green, then as the traffic progresses it can either go left, straight on or right, and as the traffic passes through here these lights will turn to green, so effectively right turners there will get as much green time as people going straight on or turning left. Once the, this light here turns to red, and the tail of the queue has moved across, these lights will then turn to green and allow that to clear. These lights will turn to red and that will stay at red and then that will mean that there's a gap in the traffic for traffic coming out of Broad Lane to be able to move across to through a green signal in the middle and that way we can create capacity room for the vehicles on Broad Lane to move through the junction. I mean, this is quite important because what we can do here is we can vary the amount of time or the gaps between the red and the green signals. So perhaps by putting queue detectors on Broad Lane, we can measure what the length of queue is there and we can hold these lights on red until we've allowed sufficient traffic to get out of Broad Lane across there safely before we release that arm.
As an extra backup to that, we also have um, monitoring cameras at all of the junctions and it will be monitored from the tower block in the city centre. So again, we can see exactly what's happening. So once we've allowed sufficient traffic to clear out a broad lane, the signals here will turn to green, the traffic will move through, it'll move across there and it'll move down there. and that will be basically the second sort of stage of the cycle. So you can see it's sort of two ways, it's the A45 going that way, then the A45, all movements going that way, and in between those movements we create the gaps to allow the broad lane traffic from either direction to move out and go whichever direction it wants. So remember I talked about the signals taking three minutes to go through their cycle. Well, One of the big advantages of this new junction layout is the fact that it will only take a minute um, for the traffic lights to go through their cycle. So that will give many more opportunities um, you know, for people to get through the junction either in vehicles um, or as pedestrians. This gives us much higher capacity for right turn in traffic. It also allows us to introduce crossings for pedestrians, so we have a Toucan crossing here, um, just to the south of the junction, on the Sainsbury side of the junction, one across on the Birmingham side of the junction, and a Puffin crossing on Broad Lane, again at the side of the restaurant. So that's massive improvement on the facilities um, for pedestrians here. We've also been talking to the residents of the service roads that run either side of Dunchurch Highway. Um, and the proposals that you see on the plans have emerged following discussions with them. So for people who live on the Tile Hill side uh, of Dunchurch Highway, you can see that they'll have a two-way access on enough broad lane just there. And there will be a sheltered right turning lane, so people who want to turn right into that service road from town will be able to do so safely. On the city side of the Dunchurch Highway, um, this will remain as a one-way um, service road. We've talked to residents about creating extra space for planting, for parking in, the, in this sort of area. And the key change here to note is that at the moment, traffic coming from Orsley Park down Buckingham Rise um, can go down this slip road and onto Broad Lane. Um, the change here will be to split that route and instead all the traffic from Orsley Park will need to join Dunchurch Highway before you get um, to the a Broad Lane Junction. And instead Lindale Road, as you can see, will feed directly into the service road. So people who live along that section can exit um, via Lind uh, Lindale Road or onto Broad Lane and they'll gain access via Lindale Road. To make sure that this junction here is safe, we're going to move the point at which the speed limit changes from 60 to 40 miles an hour. At the moment it's roughly in this location. We are going to move it towards Birmingham um, to make sure that people are slowed down in plenty of time. And I should point out there is really good visibility at that point. So when you come to this point you can see um, for quite a distance along the A45 um, to make sure it's safe. I said earlier about the fact that um, you know the current signals work on a three minute cycle time. These will be able to work on something like a minute. So you know the turnaround is going to be very much quicker. So there'll be many more opportunities for people to make the moves and also plenty of opportunities for pedestrians crossing. A further advantage is that this allows all turning movements. At the moment as you know if you're coming out of out of the city on Broad Lane, you can't turn right towards Birmingham on the A45. This will actually allow that to happen. Of course, another problem with the junction is that given the, you know, the unreliability of journey times and congestion, people look for alternative routes. So you get rat running down sort of um, unsuitable estate roads. So that's another thing that um, we hope to, uh, to avoid um, by this new design. So, for example, you know, we know that a lot of people cut through um, Eastern Green and use Park Hill Drive to get onto the A45. So, you know, we believe there are lots and lots of advantages to this type of layout. It should get um, traffic through a lot quicker, fewer queues, all turning movements allowed, greater journey time reliability and much safer facilities for pedestrians. So, you know, how is all this going to be paid for? Well. The payment is going to come from the developer of Bannerbrook Park. 
Um, at the time of building a Bannerbrook Park, at the time that the planning permission was granted, one of the conditions was that the developer pays what's known as a Section 106 contribution to fund various junction improvements. And this is one of the junctions that um, the money was taken for. So there is no um, cost to the city taxpayer. This has been funded through that Section 106 contribution. And in terms of timescales, um, we hope to start work at the end of July. The reason we want to start at the end of July is because that's during the school summer holidays and we can do the most disruptive work first. That will give us the space then to be able to manage the traffic and we hope to complete the junction by Christmas. Thank you.